Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be my video of my top tarot decks I cannot live without. This is um, for 2019, 2019. Although I think some of these are pretty much repeats of any other videos I've done in the past about this topic. Um, but these are my faves. These are my babies. These are the ones I can't see myself without. Um, they all have gentle stories that come along with them. So let's just jump right into it. Um, okay, so I have one, two, three, four. I have five here. Technically two are doubles, but five. <laughs> um, let's dive into the Rider Waits first, okay? Obviously I'm a Rider Waite type of girl. I learned tarot with Rider Waite. They're my babies. I have plenty of different versions of Rider Waite, but these are the two that are just near and dear to my soul. So the first one is my um, my 1970s. I think it was 70, I don't know, 72, 71, um, Rider Waite. It has the copyright, so this one was created after the copyright was put, was placed on the, the cards, but this was still one of the vintage versions. Um, I love this one because the card stock and the coloring is so different from what you see now that's being mass produced. Um, so this one feels like money, literally, like it feels like money in my hands when I'm shuffling it. Um, the backs are the plaid backs, those ugly plaid backs, <laughs> but I'm telling you guys the coloring in this version is more muted. It's not in your face, offensive, bright, you know? Um, and so I'm really loving, I love this, this version of the Rider Waite. The cardstock itself is very papery, like it feels like money, um, and it shuffles so nicely. So um, I really, really love working with this one. It's more of like um, a matte kind of a finish on the cardstock. It's not glossy at all. Um, and so the newer versions of the Rider Waite are glossy and <laughs> not really my fave. So that's why I'm like in love with this one. I just love the color schemes. It's really worn, very much loved, as you could tell. <laughs> um, this was an eBay purchase, and I bought it used, so it didn't come with a box or anything. It was a very, very good price for what I paid for, like really good, um, because it didn't come with the box. Okay, so that, there's that one. The other version of Rider Waite that I absolutely adore is my Albano Waite. Okay, so the Albano weight has a very crazy looking color scheme compared to the typical Rider weights that you see. It has the white cards with the suns in the back and the colors are very, very different. They're purple skies, the pentacles look crazy, green skies, we have orange skies. <laughs> it's a very wild looking deck because of the colors. Um, but I really love the Albano weight. I just think that it has its own character, its own personality to it because of the colors of the, the, the cards. Um, the, the sword suit is really brought to life. It really looks nightmarish or stress related because you have the black, um, backs, the back, the black, uh, background. So really, really, really different from what you usually see with the Rider weight. So I love the Albano for that for that purpose. This is um, another one that's near and dear to my heart. It's a more vintage, the vintage version, the new one that they have out. Um, I actually ordered a second copy and I got, <laughs> I, it looked like it was copied and then reprinted and it was blurry and, and it was super like glossy and this is this one is like the, the vintage one. So freaking love it. So that's my other baby. Um, Okay, so next I have the Victorian Romantic Tarot. This is the second edition. Now, the reason why I picked this one um, as a, a deck I can't live without is because this was gifted to me um, by a very dear friend, and she reads tarot as well, and she owned, um, I think she owned multiple copies of you know, the deck. And I remember when I was very fresh and new to the tarot, and I was browsing the tarot forums and looking at different decks and whatnot. The Victorian Romantic Tarot was one of those that I noticed that I was like, oh, I love the artwork in this deck. I wanna own it. 
and it was out of print um, and I very much expensive on eBay and so I didn't think I would ever own a copy and then when she was very generous to she sold it to me um, but at a very generous price very generous price um, and so I remember buying a copy for myself and it was the most amazing thing ever it was a gift she didn't have to sell her copy to me um, but she did because she knew I wanted it so it has beautiful artwork this deck feels magical because it has her energy into it like I said she's a reader she's a very mystical person and so whenever I work with this deck I feel like I'm also like feeling her energy too and I just love her so much. So, Leela Hell, if you are watching this, thank you for gifting me this beautiful deck. It is a treasure to me. And although I have the third edition, the third edition, which is the metallic one, I still find this one to be more near and dear. Like, this is more precious to me. Um, so, yes. This is the Victorian Romantic Tarot. And I believe you could still order the third edition on Baba Studio's website. So another deck that's near and dear is the Crow Tarot. Um, I recently obtained this one a few months ago. And this one was also a gift. So um, another friend of mine actually bought this one for me. That She bought the copy for me and sent it to me because um, I had started really embracing the Crow um, as, a, as an animal guide. They were popping up a lot for my husband. They started popping up for me. And they were just, they really came through at a very exciting point in our marriage and in our life. So um, it was just a very special time that uh, we were going through. And so she wanted me to always remember that. And that's why she gifted me the Crow Tarot. This deck <laughs> is so amazing. I've read with it many times. I treasure this one because it is nothing but crows. So the backs are what looks like to me like feathers. Um, it's nothing but crows. There's no humans in this deck. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. It's so easy to read with. It's so intuitive. And I just, I freaking love it. It speaks to me. Um, I don't have any difficulties connecting with it. It was one of those decks that I was able to whip out and start using it for client readings and everything just flowed. Um, and I absolutely love it. I feel like the crows are a very significant point part of me and my husband's marriage um, and in, in this part of our life that we're going through right now. And so <laughs> this deck would be one that I would go run for and the, run to the closet for if our house were to burn down, God forbid. But, you know, this would be one of them. I just love it so much. And it's one of my newer ones. And it's so refreshing. So... Crow Tarot. Look at the star card. The star. And then the sun. Look at that sun. Freaking love it. So cute. And lastly, I kind of went through this video kind of fast. <laughs> lastly, so this is a, um, a deck that I have multiple versions of. I have all editions pretty much. But um, this is the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. If you guys know me at all, and you will know this is probably my most favorite tarot deck aside from the Rider Waite. This one speaks to my soul. I remember I purchased the third edition um, like back maybe four years ago when I was living in my apartment. And I remember um, I was sitting alone in the apartment and Luna was just a kitten at the time. And I was opening the deck and I burst into tears when I opened this deck because it speaked to me so deeply. Um, I just felt like I was going through my life's story when I was looking at the cards. Like that's, that's how much this deck impacted me. Um, so that third edition version, I, <laughs> I was stupid and I deck modded it. So I, I, I colored the edges black and um, <laughs> smudged it. So I smudged like black ink all over most of, most of the cards. And I ended up gifting that deck recently to a friend of mine um, because I purchased a brand new copy of the third edition, which is like in somewhere in that mess. Um, and I have the box with it because this the, the first 
version that I bought didn't come with a box um, because it was a discounted deck. It was like shrink wrapped. So um, I gifted it to a friend. It was hard to gift it. I didn't really, wasn't sure if I really wanted to at the time, but I was like, you know what? I, I don't need two versions of it. I have the, the brand new one and I'm good. Um, but these babies I will never get rid of. So the Bohemian Gothic is my soul deck. It is definitely the one deck that just, I just, I see myself, I see my, 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 um, my adolescent years in that deck. The, the pains that I went through, the healing that I've gone through, it's all in that, in those cards. So it's my soul deck. Um, so the one copy that I would never, never give away, <laughs> um, and I am so happy I finally obtained it, is the first edition of the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. It is a well-loved deck. Um, it was used when I bought it, obviously. I had to tape up the box because it was falling apart. It was an eBay purchase, and the lady um, that I purchased it from, I negotiated, and she, she dropped her price just a little bit. But it was, I was, I remember like, I was so excited <laughs> when I finally knew I was gonna own the first edition. I wanted the first edition so bad because of the card backs. Um, the color scheme in every version is different also, but the card backs of the first are just like phenomenal, beautiful. They are black and white, and you have this gorgeous design of the skeletons, the skulls. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I really wanted this one for specifically for that. But also, the imagery in this version, the first edition, is dark. It's dark. It's like you're walking through a very, you know, a dark moonlit path, coming across all of these beautiful characters in the cards. It is so deep. It is so bone chilling. It's just like, I, this is one of those decks where like I like to have candle lit, like the, can the candles on and turn off the lights and maybe have a salt lamp on, but just have like that glow of the room and then I just love going through the cards. They're magical. This deck screams Halloween season for me. It screams fall. Every time I bring it out, it's just like, oh, it's just beautiful. And so um, when I finally was able to obtain this first edition, I was so excited. I was so excited. Um, so the first edition is my baby. Like if there's, if there's any edition of this deck that I like and that I prefer, it would be the first. This is, this is it. Um, then the other one that I could never give away that I am so excited to finally own, um, is the silver edition of the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. So when the first edition came out, um, I think it was like a year later or so, maybe not even, let me... Let's, let's see if it has the date on here. Maybe not. <laughs> copyright 2007. And then the first edition is copyright 2007. So it's probably within the same year. Um, the silver edition came out. So the silver edition is like, <laughs> I cried too when I opened this deck up. Um, again, it's just... <sighs> You have to see it in different types of lighting. It just doesn't do, the camera will not do this deck justice. So the backs are the same. You have the, the beautiful card backs, but this one has a little bit of a silver, like a silver hue to it. I don't even know how to explain it. It just looks like they glow, like they're just, oh my God, they're like, they're transparent. And <laughs> I fucking died for this deck. Like I died when I saw this deck. This was already my soul deck. It was already the one that I knew. This is the one that speaks to my heart. And when I got a glimpse of this in the silver edition, I just couldn't believe how beautiful it is. I'm telling you guys, the camera is not gonna do this justice. You have to see this in person. It's like <clears throat> when you like tilt the cards a certain way, you get a different look of it. Like it just looks ghostly. But I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's like, it's like those photos when you walk by where the face is looking one way and then as you walk by it like morphs into something else. That is exactly how these cards are. <laughs> I just can't. I can't. And it, it, it's just so creepy. So creepy. 
Um, so yeah, that is the silver edition of the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. Look at this, the Headless Horseman. You have so many characters in this deck. You have werewolves, you have headless horsemen, you have like little demons, you have gargoyles, you have dead people, <laughs> you have ghosts, and you have like, oh my God, this is probably my favorite. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, I actually did a video where I was showing my, um, here's the werewolf. I did a video where I was showing all of my Bohemian Gothic um, tarot editions. So look for that one um, if you want to see it. But I was so excited. I remember I was, I think I was in bed with my husband and I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to buy it. And he's like, babe, just buy it. You have the money. It was literally like the money that I made off of readings and I just had it starting to pile up in my PayPal and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to buy it. And I remember I asked first, I always negotiate on eBay and I did, I negotiated and they dropped their price because I was willing to pay right there. And so, um, they took it off cause it was actually up for bid or best offer and so the bid, you know, the bidding, it's like you can risk trying to bid and get a, still a good offer, but nine times out of 10, you're, you're going to pay a good penny for it. So I ended up messaging them um, with my offer and I always offer a low so that if like they meet me somewhere higher, I still don't feel like, you know, I still feel like I'm getting a little bit of a deal. And um, it was a very sweet lady. I remember she messaged me a couple times and I just, I told her like, this is my soul deck. Like you have no idea. <laughs> And so she um she brought her price down a little bit and I did I didn't pay nearly as much as what you see these versions out for. They're like up for like five, six hundred dollars. Like I don't I didn't even pay three hundred for it, you guys. I didn't even pay three hundred. I don't remember exactly how much I paid, but um it wasn't three hundred. So <laughs> to me I just remember thinking, like I remember telling my husband that's a lot of money for a deck, I know, but he goes, no, it's okay, babe. It's your thing. Like, you love it. So, yes. So, anyways, those are my top tarot decks that I cannot live without for 2019. Will it change? Probably. I'm sure, like, some of these will, you know, they won't be as precious. Well, actually, I don't know because a lot of them are very, like, precious. <laughs> maybe the Rider Waits may be like, eh. And then, you know, but for the most part... I love what I have. So, um, yeah, so this, those are my top tarot decks that I can't live without in 2019. Um, leave some comments below. Let me know what are your top tarot decks that you can't live without. And yeah, we'll talk cards. I love talking cards with people. <laughs> All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Bye, my loves.